Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In this video, we're going to be looking at a topic that's very interesting, one that's very interesting to me particularly, and that is isolation products. Now, if you're new to the channel, we do hi-fi and home cinema based content exclusively. We do technical uh, videos, we do show visits, we do reviews, song demonstrations and all sorts. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now we've got two products here in front of me, both isolation products. We have the ISO Acoustics Gaia isolation feet and we have the Ceradisks from Plinth Design. A lot of you will probably recognise those already. Now it is one of those topics where some people will say isolation products are snake oil and other people will say no they're not accessories they're essentials and with those types of products straight away they'll say do a blind test do a blind test well blind tests have been done and that is why you know personally I feel so strongly about these products so stick around and we'll get into them in more detail. My first real exposure to the power of isolation products was actually at one of the big industry publications. I got invited there to do what they called a big question, which turned out to be a blind test. Sat down, three of us sat down, all we could see was a pair of speakers, monitor audio platinum speakers, system and everything was behind us, we hadn't seen anything. We were told there would be, we'd be listening to systems A, B and C and we had to rate our preference for A, B and C and it was over three or four different songs I can't exactly remember. Now come the end we had to give over our preferences and why we thought the sound was better and what was really interesting from that was, was not really the, the effects as such but what was really interesting was that I was able to consistently pick out a preference over four different songs and come the end when they told us all they was doing was moving a CD player from the floor which was a hard concrete floor to a, a bamboo rack and to a glass rack I could not believe it I could not believe it and when I thought back and I you know I remember driving home from there really thinking about this it's like wow how can it make such a big difference you know the differences wasn't massive but it's big enough to be identifiable and repeatable identifiable across different musics I'd never heard before and in a room I'd never listened in before and on speakers I'd never heard before but I picked out my preference for every single time exactly the same and that was a real interesting one for me and it got me looking into you know different types of isolation products and I think the reason there might be you know snake oil attached is because there's so many different products on the market that all look completely different obviously there's similarities between some they all make you know obviously claims to, to, to make a difference and I think people will look at it and, and be you know where do I even start what do I even do what do these products even mean and what is their intended design goal? And I think that's a really important one to pay attention to. What is the actual intended design goal for the products? Because it's actually different. And different products are designed to be used in different ways. Now, obviously, we've got two here. This, these are, in my opinion, very much tried and tested. Now, if you want something that's an equivalent to this, go and look up Steel Points. Now, Steel Points are outstanding products. They have a whole range from very small ones to huge ones. And they are very, they're excellent. They're absolutely brilliant. I've tested them out a lot. But they're expensive. They're very, very expensive. Now, when I got into trying to find isolation products to use, I couldn't afford that. That was too much money to buy sets of steel points. So I went hunting and I actually come across a company, Plinth Design, and I looked at their products. They do beautiful pictures and artwork and stuff to, to kind of show what they are and what they do. And I thought I'll just give them a go because it wasn't expensive. And I think I bought one set or maybe two sets just to give them a go. And I was surprised, actually. I was really surprised at the difference that they made. I got to, I bought loads of sets and I got to know the owner of the company really well. And he said that he was had a, a different style. So up until that point, I've been trying aluminium-based products. And he said he was, he designed some using a, a plastic called Delrin. Now, Delrin gets used in machine guns very antony resonant and very dead as a, as a plastic material really really light as well so i ended up buying a load of sets of delrin and i was testing out aluminium and i was testing out aluminium versus delrin then i was testing out aluminium and delrin mixed between the two and you know i was getting mixed results but it was always changing the sound so it kind of fueled me to keep trying and keep testing now a friend of mine bought a couple of sets of steel points and he was raving about how wonderful they were. So I said, well, look, I've got some really good ones as well. And I took mine to his house and we tested the steel points against the ones that I was using and the steel points were better. And not just a little bit better, they was markedly better. So I was thinking, right, I know these products work, but the steel points are better. 
where, where are we going wrong? What's going on here? So I, you know, I spoke to the, the owner of the company, Plinth Design, and we discussed it, and we dis I discussed what I thought might be the reasons for it and things we could do. Now, over a period of a few months, we had lots of discussions. He sent me different ideas to test out, and I fed back some ideas. And we actually ended up with the Ceridisc, which obviously you can see here. Now, the Ceridisc is made from stainless steel. It uses a stainless steel you know, top plate and bottom plate with ceramic bearing in between. Now, it's a clever design. I can't go into too much because obviously that's giving away a lot of the work that we did to design it, but it works on a basis of big, big raised top plate, so we get a lot of contact with our products. And then the top plate has a different design to the bottom plate that is obviously on purpose, and it would take not so much a trained eye, but you'd have to specifically look to actually see the difference because they look very similar. And I've got some brand new, actually, well, I've not I've had these razors, not even opened them yet, some bases here. So if you look at the difference between, get rid of that, the base, which is obviously is completely flat, and the top, which is kind of domed in shape, you'll see that it's very, very different. Now, they're really nice, they're really well made, kind of precision engineer cut and stuff. He has that all done. Obviously, working with stainless steel is obviously expensive. But a set of these, a set of four, is actually not expensive. In fact, you can probably get three or four sets of these for the same price that you'll get a set of steel points for. Now, why is that important? Uh, you know, and are steel points better? Well, I was testing these against the smallest steel points, and I actually preferred, I thought these gave me better performance than steel points, but obviously steel points gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, what's really important is, ideally, you want to isolate everything in your system. Pa any power conditions and stuff, especially, but everything, amplifier, you know, DAC, CD player, you want to isolate absolutely everything. Now, that becomes ultra expensive when you need to buy two, three, four, or five sets. So when the actual cost per set of four is lower naturally it's going to be a lot less money you know cost to do the whole system that's ultimately what you want to do so I'm just going to quickly show you how you buy these they're designed in two ways you can either buy them with one ceramic bearing one large one and that will sit on top and what you get there is a little bit of flexibility and movement so when you place these under a product products never completely flat I've never had one yet that's completely flat so having a little bit of movement and stuff in the top can be quite useful because it always means we're going to get a nice well, a fairly nice contact area. Now, a different time or different style is actually using three smaller bearings. Then that'll cost a little bit more to use three bearings because ceramic bearings are expensive. But that gives you a solid, well, I'll, I'll demonstrate here with the three large ones. That gives you a solid, a rock solid platform there with no movement in it at all. Now, what's really interesting with that and the best way to use these products is we just use this as an example of our CD player or our DAC or our amplifier. When you place four of them underneath it, you'll probably find that three bite tight and one will be loose. So my advice to people is you move them around ever so slightly gently, you move them around until all four of the sets bite up tight. So once you really, once you kind of finger, you haven't got to push them hard, once you kind of gently finger push them and none of them move, that's perfect. Now, if you can get them under key components, if you can get them under power supplies, you know, like toroidals and stuff like that, things that vibrate, wonderful. But pay more attention to just gently moving them with your fingers until they all bite tight. Now, that can be really tricky and difficult to do when you're fiddling around and you're trying to find, find get yourself a ruler or something like that, just something that you can apply a gentle amount of pressure until all four bite tight. Now the design of these actually goes a stage further than that and this was a really crucial part of the testing that we did. Now if you can see this one, this is a top plate, they naturally come with rubber o-rings in them. Now every, every material vibrates, everything's got a resonant frequency. Now this, this was a, an area of debate between me and the designer of these and I actually felt we don't want rubber o-rings, I felt we want pure stainless steel and pure ceramic but he said no nope, because this has got a vibration, you know this will vibrate at a frequency. So in testing, now we've got obviously rubber. Let me just open this one again. You have a rubber option at the top and a rubber option at the bottom. Now I tested out both. I've tested. Well, I've tested out loads. For me, they sound best when you take the rubbers completely out. That's what gives you the most open and expressive and big and dynamic sound. But obviously, if in your own system, if that's too much putting the rubber in just seems to tone it down a little bit just will bring it down a little bit so there's a small element there of tuning capability built in to these products so when you think these are going to retail from memory about 150 pounds a set which may seem like a lot of money but it's only like 30 quid 
perfing, like really well machined uh, stainless steel with ceramic bearings that are bloody expensive on their own. They're about £10 a bearing. So when you think £150 for a set of four, when you consider other products in the market, you know, I thought maybe three or four times the price of that for one set, you can get a lot of set of these for the same amount of money. And these work, these are fantastic. I put these personally through a lot of testing. I use these throughout the whole system. I use them absolutely everywhere. And you know, I swear by them, you know, I'm, I was actually really proud of the ideas that I put into it. I'm really proud of these as a product. So these work fantastic. You know, you'll see me using these on top of products as well. In, for example, recent Core Cutest, you'll see I put them on top. Now that top one is actually a different design. It looks very similar, but it's actually a slightly different design. And that, that was basically an off one of the off cuts, but not obviously an off cut, but one of the spares that when we was doing all the different types of testing for what worked best and what didn't, they were just some spares. It just so happens that they work out to be best for being used on top. So that was fantastic. So I've hung on to them and obviously I used them on top. Now, obviously they're sold with one big bearing or three big bear or three small bearings. However, like with a lot of things that you test out, for me, I personally think they work best with more ceramic. So I actually use them with three large ceramic bearings used in the small holes. Now that's tricky because it's not totally designed for it and it can sometimes be a little bit fiddly and sometimes the top can fall off and stuff. But for me, the more ceramic you use, the better. Now they're not sold like that. You'd have to purchase extra ceramic bearings from Plymouth Design, but you know, it's one of those things I would say, start out as you are, Start out with them as they are, see what you think, and if you'd like to mess around and have a little tinker and a play, order some more bearings from Plymouth Design, and yeah, have some fun and see how you get on with those. But as I say, bearing in mind you want to think the whole system ideally it is where you are. But speaking of a whole, the whole system, there's one area of isolation that I've not even covered, and I've not even tried, and I've not even played with, and most of the advice would say, start there and work backwards. So that is with the speakers. I've never actually properly isolated a pair of speakers and seen the benefit of it. Now, at the recent shows that I've been visiting to, I just stumbled upon the ISO acoustics demonstration. It was actually at the Indulgence show, which obviously was last year. I just was walking around filming and I walked into the room and the guys were doing a demonstration. It's this very simple and fast AB demonstration. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here. Now, actually, because it was a kind of a bit of an off the cuff filming, the video and the demonstration come out really well. However, at the recent um, Bristol show, Bristol Sound and Vision 2018, I actually spoke to, uh, obviously, the guys from Ice Acoustics, and we arranged a proper full demonstration where I was able to film and get an explanation of the products and what they do. So that is actually a better video to go and watch, and obviously I'll link that one up here. Now, what are the guys? Well, the guys are dedicated speaker isolators. And who are ISO Acoustics? I mean, a lot of you might not have even heard of them. Now, ISO Acoustics pedigree and heritage is built actually from studios and the isolation of speakers within studios. If you imagine that you see a lot of studios, don't you, with kind of monitors on a desk or monitors maybe around, you know, a computer desk you see a lot. ISO Acoustics started with products to isolate those speakers from the desk situation, you know, from that uh, compromise and effect that or neg negative or negative effect the desk would have on the speaker. So that's where they started. And obviously they've moved more recently into the home audio market. And the demonstrations I've had of these guys has absolutely blown me away time and time again. So I could not wait to get a set in because the Kef reference speakers, as wonderful as they are, and they are wonderful, I can't help but think, you know, is there more performance that we can squeeze out of them from, from a physical point of view? So the guys are dedicated speaker isolators. They, they work on a simple process or you install them in via a simple process you literally unscrew the spikes that you know every speaker manufacturer includes spikes don't they you unscrew them and you literally just in screw you just literally screw in a guy so it's a set of four one per four feet for your speakers the guys are bought independently and then you can buy all different manner of threads. So you literally will screw one thread into the guy, the other end of the thread screws into your speaker, and they sell all different types of threads, so they'll work with pretty much every type of speaker out there. Now what's really interesting about these is it's a patented, clever design, and what ISO Acoustics say is, there's two things that happens. When a speaker obviously pumps energy into the room, and if you turn it up loud, that's a ton of energy that it pumps into the room. Obviously some of that energy is gonna reflect back into the, into the room, and then come back into the speakers. Now, if you think about that, for example, and I've been thinking about this a lot myself, do manufacturers of speakers think 
beyond the individual. So they do they obviously they can try and control the vibrations of a speaker individually. But we don't listen to speakers individually, we listen to them in pairs. Or we might listen to them in five, fives and sevens and elevens with multiple subwoofers. That's a lot of vibration that's finding its way back into every single speaker within the system. So I don't know how whether manufacturers go to that length. I don't know if that's even predictable in terms of the effect. So when we think about a product that might isolate the speaker from all the vibrations that are in the room, which are inevitable, it makes sense that it might have a positive impact. But these go even further. What these try and do, they try and hold the speaker in better alignment so that obviously the drivers can become kind of more free and more pistonic in motion. That is the, the clever design. And when you install them, you have to install them in a certain way. Talking about the Isis Acoustics guys specifically, they come actually in three different variants and it's actually three different sizes. Now we have a one, a two, and a three. Very, very simple. The one R4, the largest and heaviest speakers, two R4 in the middle, and then three R4, your smaller speakers. And the greatest thing about that is they're actually cheaper or they cost less the, you know the smaller you need so you only buy you only pay the money for the speakers you need you know you don't you don't have to pay more than you would need for your speakers now the guy ones will hold up to a hundred kilogram speaker so that weight is distributed across all four feet so it's not a hundred kilograms per foot it's, there's four feet per set so it's a hundred kilograms shared now these are the guy twos these will support up to 56 kilograms so that's a 56 kilogram speaker can sit on top and the guy threes will support up to 32 kilograms so the guy threes the cheapest in the model will still support a very hefty speaker. So I think that's something really brilliant straight away is that we're not, we don't have to buy Gaia ones at their higher price point. If we have smaller, lighter speakers, we can buy a cheaper model. I think that's a fantastic part with the range. And if one of the first things you noticed about these guys is, this is a little dirty because of the plastic on the top, is the actual quality of the packaging. It's really nice packaging with a nice you know, description on the back of what the product is. And yeah, it's a really, you know, in terms of kind of that buyer's, what's uh, in terms of the kind of buyer satisfaction, in the satisfaction you get when you spend a lot of money on something and you get a nice product come through, they certainly have that. So let's get stuck into an unboxing. <laughs> And simply they have our instruction manuals of what to do very nice really well made really nice there we go there's our four isolated okay let's get one out and have a look at it First thing I noticed, obviously, about the you know, you know, guys and the ice acoustic guys, and you can't really see this when you're at shows, really, because, well, you can, but obviously, I'm walking around with a, with a camera, but uh, it's got like a black, like a dark kind of black chrome finish, which, when you're marrying it up to a pair of, you know, <laughs> you know piano black speakers, that's really nice, but it also means they're not going to really draw too much attention to themselves. Now, the design looks pretty simple, doesn't it? Again, we've got our thread at the top. So we'll have obviously four of them. We'll take that out. We'll have four of them. There they are. Now they're designed to work with the ISO Acoustics logo at the front. That's really important. Part of the design of them. And they feel they've got a nice rubber bottom which will work great for wooden uh wood yeah, wood type floors. Now I've seen that they actually sell a, a, you know a, a product that goes on the bottom of them to bite into and go through much thicker carpet. Now in this room, we've got a concrete floor with about, I don't know, 15 mil, pretty standard, typical underlay, and you know, just like an average depth carpet. So I think we'll be fine with this design, but we'll see how we get, and obviously. Now, in terms of testing out the guys, that is actually, in a way, easy and difficult at the same time. So all we can really do is, is all we always do, is play the system as it is, put the speakers on the guys, and then play it again, you know, do the recordings as we always do, and you should be able to hear, obviously, the difference. So back to where we started. Now, the Sarah discs are, you know, tried and tested 
So they've used throughout this system. I've been using them for years. Now, obviously, the ice acoustics guys are going to be really interesting to try. However, I'm expecting big things from them from what I've already heard. Now, again, is it confusing? It can be a confusing market out there. We've got so many different types of isolation products. Now, these are specific products for a specific use. We have the guys are specifically designed to go under speakers. And we've got the Serra discs, which are specifically designed to go under everything else. Amplifiers, you know, DAX, streamers, you name it, it can go underneath it. Now, you could potentially use these under speakers, but it just would not be safe. Because they're not, you know, there's no, there's no way of attaching these to the speaker like these do. Obviously, these screw to the speakers. There's no way of making that safe. So you could use that, but I wouldn't advise it. These are for your speakers, and I can't wait to try them out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully, it's give you a little bit of an insight to what's really a topic that we're going to be covering. So we're going to be covering isolation, more aimed at the speakers because, you know, the, the product side of things were already, you know, already covered really. So I'm really interested to try these out under the speakers. And as always, we'll do our usual videos where we do, we record the system as it is, put the guys in, and then do a set of recordings there. Now, like everything, sometimes things take a little bit of fine tuning, don't they, once you get them in. So I'll go through all that. I'll explain everything that I've done to the system. There'll be a whole series of videos coming for it. So I hope this has been of interest. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's really just to get a, you know, a little bit of a wet whistle, a little bit of a closer look at the plinth design, Serra discs, and the, the ISO acoustics guys. Obviously, these are the Gaia 2s, but they're all very similar. And yeah, can't wait to try them out. So if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button. Visit our website, please, if you haven't already. I've done some updates on there, so there'll be some new stuff to go and watch, read, and see. And I'll be seeing you soon in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Yeah.